We're glad that you're all with us today. We welcome you. I um, want to say welcome to our YouTube audience, Facebook audience. Um, please help us get the word out. Like, subscribe, share. Apparently, if you hit those thumbs up on the videos, I just found this out. It helps push them kind of up when people are searching. So um, even if you're here watching now, go back, pop it on, listen to it again. Hit the thumbs up. It helps out. Um, so I want to thank you for that. Um, last week, well, not last week, last week I was up here, two weeks ago, um, I preached on Shalom and about it's something that we want, something that we should want, something that only God can give, and that Shalom is more than peace. It is prosperity, it is wealth, it is health, it is joy. It only comes from God, only God can give it, and that we want it and should want it every day through 2023. But we should want it every day until we no longer are on this earth. Because um, once we're no longer on this earth, we shouldn't have a problem with that shalom, hopefully, um, if you're on the right side of things. So only God can give it, and if we do our part, then we will receive it. That is a promise from God, and we need to do our part in order for that to happen. Because I preached on that, I kind of issued a challenge. You don't have to raise your hand. I'm curious. You can all kind of take a internal inventory of how many days you actually were able to shut your phone off and spend one hour either reading or praying or just abiding in the Lord. And I will tell you, it's a lot harder than you think it's going to be. It was a couple of days in the last two weeks that it was hard for me and I was not able to do it. The good thing is the Lord has grace. He knows. And when we mess it up, the very next day we go, I apologize. I'm going to try again. And every day that you do, take that challenge and are able to do it, you can feel that the Lord wants to spend time with you. And it should be easy on certain days. The two days that were the easiest for me was the days that I was already in church. Every Sunday, it was real easy to take that phone and throw it in the back. The box is still back there or leave it in the car and when we came to Bible study on Tuesday nights, it was real easy to not look at the phone. The days when you're not coming to church are the harder days. But it can still be done. So if we are willing to do that and we are willing to keep our minds stayed on him, he will give us, as his word promises, perfect peace or the original translation, shalom, shalom, which is beyond the shalom. It is a double portion. So... Today, we're kind of continuing. We'll see how it gets together. But we're going to be in the New Testament. We're going to be in Romans. So if you've got your Bibles, go to Romans. We will also be in First and Second Corinthians and in First Peter. So it's all in the New Testament. Um, get in that general area. Throw a couple bookmarks in. We'll get to the exact verses when it comes up. Um, before we start, let's pray and ask the teacher to be here. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for allowing us to just be in your presence. I pray, Lord, that through this service, the rest of it, that you are just with us. You speak to us on a level that only we know can come from you in a way that only you can speak to us. And Lord, I just pray that you move me out of the way. Use me in the way that you see fit. Allow the things that I say, Lord, to be from you and any thought that comes in my mind that is just from me, Lord, you push it aside. I ask, Lord, that you just direct this service, lead me, guide me, and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So at the end of the service, I have a gift for everybody that's here. Um, we'll get more to what that is later, but you got something to look forward to. So I have a tangible gift that you can actually hold on to, you can take with you. But I'm hoping that it is nothing compared to the gift of what we are about to receive. So we're going to start today in Romans chapter 10. And this is verses 14 through 17. 
these verses should f sound familiar because it was something that I read two weeks ago. And this is what's leading us from the Shalom that I preached on two weeks ago into where we are going today. So this is Romans chapter 10, starting with verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who brings glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Two weeks ago, I read those verses, made a joke about having beautiful feet that day because I was up here preaching the gospel of Shalom. And the Lord has led it to continue into this week on the fact that we should all have beautiful feet. Yeah. It says in this verse, how can they hear unless there is a preacher? And while I am up here preaching now, there's no reason that we are not all preachers. Every one of us should be out in the world preaching the gospel. And every one of us is called to preach the gospel. And as this verse says, how can they hear unless there is a preacher? And how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. And every one of us in this church should be falling under, under those verses. And how can they hear unless there's a preacher? And how can there be a preacher unless the preacher is sent? And we are called and sent to preach the gospel. And as Jesus said, a command to go and preach the gospel to all creatures in all the world. And we have a whole lot easier of a time going and preaching the gospel, as Jesus said, to all the world than 50 years ago, than 100 years ago. 100 years ago, churches sent missionaries. They supported missionaries. We still send missionaries. We still support missionaries. And every time we give, we are going into the world and preaching the gospel because we are sending a preacher with our money. And so every time we give, we are preaching the gospel to Mexico and to Russia, to Africa, to India, to the missionaries we support. And thank God that we don't have to go to Russia and India and Mexico and Africa. Because there are people there that are already preaching the gospel. And how can they go if they're not sent? And how can they be sent if we will not support them? And so our command from Jesus to go into all the world to preach the gospel to all creatures is a whole lot easier now than it was 50 years ago and 100 years ago. And 50 years ago and 100 years ago with the missionaries that were going and preaching the gospel that were supported by the finances of the churches, it's now even easier because every one of us has a computer in our pockets usually 24 hours a day that will help us to reach all the world and all creatures. And every time we share a Bible verse, every time we see a Bible verse and we repost it, every time we hear a sermon on YouTube and we share that sermon on our Facebook, we are casting seed into the world that we do not know who will see. And we need 
to spread the gospel and leave the consequences to Jesus. When Jesus talked about the sower and going out and reaching into his bag and taking seed and throwing it out, he didn't say, and he made sure all of it went where it was supposed to, on perfect ground. Some of it fell in the rocks, some of it fell on the road, some of it fell in good soil. Our job is not to make sure that it always falls in good soil. Our job is to make sure that we are casting it to all the world. And every time we share something on social media, every time we send a Bible verse to a friend, every time we post it up, especially on our social media, we have no idea who will see that and who it will reach. And it is God's job to make them the soil to receive it. But if we're not willing to take the seed out of the bag and to throw it, it will never land on good soil. And we are often worried about posting things because somebody might see it and somebody might be offended. And our command from Jesus is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures, not to preach to the people that want to hear it. Because I can get up here and turn off the camera that's on YouTube and you're all here. You decided to walk in the door. You're willing to listen. Putting it up on YouTube, sharing it, means somebody might click on it who's not going to want to hear what is being said in this book. It's not our job to decide who gets to hear it and who doesn't. Our job is to preach it. And your job is to preach it. Our next set of verses is in 1 Corinthians. This is chapter 9. <coughs> This is 1 Corinthians 9, two verses, 14 and 16. The Lord has commanded us to go out and preach the gospel. And in these two verses, it says, Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. Verse 16, For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. We need to preach the gospel because Jesus commanded us to preach the gospel, but we need to make sure we are living the gospel. And if we are preaching it and not living it, it is just as bad as not preaching it. We need to make sure we're living it. And when we live it, we preach it, sometimes without even saying it. And going through this and preparing this, the Lord led me to realize something that we often don't really want to hear. The best testimony to the world of us living the gospel is when we suffer. And as I preached last week and said, I'm not called to get up here and preach sunshines, rainbows, and lollipops. But there are sunshines, rainbows, and lollipops. And last week, the Lord said, go ahead and preach sunshines, rainbows, and lollipops. And here we are two weeks later saying, don't preach sunshines, rainbows, and lollipops because we will suffer for Christ. And the best testimony is when we suffer for Christ and we don't give up hope and we don't lose trust. That is the best example of living the gospel. And that is something that most churches are not going to preach, but it is a fact. Jesus has said it. The world hated me. It's going to hate you. Jesus said, you're going to suffer for my sake. You will go through trials. You will go through tribulations. And the best testimony to the world, the reason that the church grew so fast at the beginning was because people said, if they're willing to suffer, there must be truth in it. They won't deny Christ. They're willing to die for the gospel. There must be truth in it. And one of the 
best examples when we're suffering is to the people around us who may know that we're Christians. I have a best friend. He lives with me. He, when we used to do Bible study at my house, he never really sat in, but he'd walk by every once in a while. I know he was hearing. And right about the time he moved in, and as long as he's known me, he's known Bill's a Christian, dad's a pastor. And right about the time he moved in, five years ago, maybe somewhere around there, um, me and my wife, was my wife at the time, went through a big, big, big trial. We were praying. We had people praying. We had people around the world praying. And the Lord did not answer our prayer in the way we thought the Lord was going to answer our prayer. And about three months into this trial of the answer not being what we were expecting and praying for, um, he was sitting and we were talking and he said, I want to say, that of all the things that I thought would shake your faith, it would be this. And it hasn't. And the biggest testimony to my best friend was not Bible study at my house. It was not me going to church. It was him seeing me. And my wife, my girlfriend at the time, go through a huge trial. And as he said, your world come crashing down and it didn't shake your faith. And that was a testimony to him. And as much as I didn't want to go through it, as much as I know my wife didn't want to go through it, God brought us through it. There's times every once in a while where Satan will try and rear his ugly head and bring it back up. It's done. It's over with. We went through it. God brought us through it. And it was a testimony to at least one person that I know of and the suffering that we have in Christ is so that we can live the gospel. Turn to first Peter. This is chapter three. It's hard to think that we need to suffer. But if you think about when you're preaching the gospel to people, what you're preaching, the suffering we go through for Jesus is nothing compared to the suffering he went through for us. So this is First Peter, this is chapter 3, starting in verse 13. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. We will suffer. And we will suffer either because it's the will of God for us to go through something so that somebody else can see that God brings us through or we will suffer because we are being disobedient. And I don't know about you. I don't want to suffer at all, but I'd much rather suffer, as Peter says here, for righteousness than for evil. Because at least when we are suffering for righteousness, we are suffering where the Lord will take care of us, not the Lord punishing us because we are being disobedient. And we will suffer for Christ. But the question is, will it shake your hope? And it should not shake your hope. And it should not shake your foundation if it is solid. Jesus talks about a wise man building his house on a rock, and when the rains and the floods come, the house still stands because it's on a solid foundation. 
And when your foundation is on Christ, it does not matter what Satan throws at you. Floods, rain, does not matter. That house will stand if your foundation is on the rock. And if you look at verse 15 again, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you with a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. It's supposed to be meekness and reverence. In the original translation of fear in Greek, it was more of a reverence for God. And it says we're supposed to always be ready to give an answer. And we need to be able to be ready to give an answer for our hope. And the Greek translation for hope is elpis. And it is the God of hope, the author and source of hope, particularly the hope of salvation through Christ, eternal life, and his blessings. That is the hope. And that is true hope. And that is only hope. We have no other hope in this life other than the hope that comes from Jesus. And we need to always be ready to give an answer on why we believe. And so that leads us today to the whole point of us being ready and should be preaching. We need to be preaching the gospel. And when the suffering comes and we tell people, as much as I'm going through this, and as much as I don't like to go through this, I know God's got it in his hands. I know that his word tells me that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. And people say, how can you believe that? We need to be ready to give them an answer for our hope. And we're called to preach the gospel. And what is the gospel? Gospel means good news. Turn real quick to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're called to preach the gospel. We're called to preach the good news. This is 2 Corinthians 5, starting in verse 14. This is something that you need to underline in your Bible, bookmark it in your Bible, highlight it in your Bible, try to memorize it in your Bible. Because this is our hope. Chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconcil reconciling the world to himself, not impugning their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That is our hope. That is when people say, what hope do you have? That's it right there. And that section is a verse of hope, and it's what we should be telling the world. And if you look at verse 17 again, when people give you an excuse, because that's all it is, verse 17 is what we need to be telling them. I also have done some bad things. I've also done things that I don't know why God loves me. But right here, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. That is the hope for them. 
that we believe in. This section of verse is a hope of what we need to tell the whole world. And verse 21 might be one of the greatest, most loving verses in the Bible, next to John 3.16, which everybody knows. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Verse 21 here, if you break it down, says, For he, God, made him Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us. Jesus, who is holy, righteous, perfect, committed no sin, God made sin for us. And what that means is when he was on that cross, every sin, every sin that I committed, past, present, future, was on Jesus. Every sin, everybody in the world committed that believes and calls on Jesus for forgiveness was on him at that moment. Past, present, and future. God put our sin onto him, onto himself, so that he could die for us, so that we would be righteous. He took our place. What we could not do, he did. Because no matter how good we were, no matter how hard we try, we will never be able to overcome the sin in our life. And that verse right there is the one you need to memorize. You need to tell people when they ask what the gospel is. That's the gospel. God came down. He took the sin that you committed, past, present, and future, and laid it on his body as a perfect sacrifice so that you can be righteous in God's eyes. And all you have to do is accept it. Let's look real quick at Romans. This is Romans chapter 8. Verses 1 through 4. This is pretty close to what I just read. One more section of verses that talks about it. This is Romans chapter 8, 1 through 4. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled to us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. That is the gospel once again. What we could not do because we couldn't keep the law, Jesus did for us. He came down, he kept the law, and then he said, I'll take their sin. Again, past, present, and future. Jesus did for us what we could never do for ourselves, and that is the gospel. That is the good news. And it is sad that we are so afraid to preach good news. Closing, I got one more verse. It's in Romans chapter 1. I'll get to it in a second. But the title of this sermon is Unashamed Preaching. And because we shouldn't be ashamed to give good news, that's why it should be called Unashamed Preaching. I can promise you right now, I don't care who's listening in the future, I don't care who's listening right now, if I walked up to you and I said, here's a thousand dollars, I want you to go and find somebody and give them a thousand dollars, every one of us would love to walk over and give somebody the good news of, here's a thousand dollars. And we have the opportunity to give something that is so much more valuable than money, than health, we have the ability to give people shalom, which is all of that. And we should be preaching good news. And it's sad that we are so ashamed to give good news that we won't even share a Bible verse on our social media or retweet if we do Twitter or share a sermon 
that has touched us because, well, one of my friends or one of my coworkers, and we're so afraid that we might upset someone. And it's good news. It's good news. Sharing all of this stuff shows that we're unashamed to preach the gospel. And we could go up to somebody face to face and preach the gospel, which is what we're called to do. We can live the gospel until they ask us about our hope, which is what we're called to do. Or we can do it much, much easier, which is post it on social media and cast it out there and let God take care of it, which is a whole lot easier than going face to face, door to door, other countries. We get a yearly notification on our YouTube channel, which is not very big. Some of these other churches that have YouTube channels are gigantic. Ours isn't. Our church isn't big. Our YouTube following isn't very big. But the first time we got it, I was shocked because it tells you the top three countries of people viewing your videos. And ours was America, obviously, Russia, and Ukraine. That shocked me. I didn't know that people in Russia and Ukraine would be watching our videos. I don't know how they came across our videos. All I know is that we put it up and cast it out and God led them to it. And now if they believe, it's because we cast. If they choose not to, it's not our fault. Leave God the consequences. Do what he says. That's what we're called to do. And we're called to preach the gospel. And it's very easy to share things on social media. And we're often ashamed to do it because we don't want to offend people, which is ridiculous. Because if they're offended, it's good news. If they get upset about it, they're like, I'm just trying to share something with you that is good news. Look up the word gospel. It is good news. If you don't want to believe in it, that's fine. But it's still good news. And we're so afraid of offending and we should not be ashamed. And I want to read the one last verse, which is Romans chapter 1, and this is verse 16. Again, this is something you should underline, you should memorize. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. When this was written, by Paul, there was only Jew and Greek. If you look at this now, salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, because that's what it came to, and also everyone else. Everyone else. All creatures, as Jesus said. We shouldn't be ashamed because it has the power for salvation to preach. And as I said, we have very, very easy and many opportunities to preach the gospel. And that leads me, as I close, to the gift I have for every one of you. I want to thank my brother because he let me borrow the crickets. I want to thank my wife because I know that there was some time she was upset that I was not paying attention to her while doing this. But for each and every one of you, and for those of you on YouTube, if you want to send a message to our church Facebook so that it's not for everybody to see, private message us, I will personally put one of these in an envelope and mail it and pay for everything. And we're not asking for any money for this because this is how the gospel works. Jesus did it for me. And I should want to share it. For free. In the New Testament, there's someone who comes to I guess Peter and John asking for the power and wants to pay them for the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul and Simon? Okay. He came, and it's free. You can't pay for it. Jesus already paid for it. 
And for any of you that want these, you can take as many as you want. I can make more. I see my wife look up as soon as I say that. I can make more. Um, but I have different sizes. There's stickers for the back window of your car. And you can see on the bottom, that's Romans 116. Anybody that wanted to, that knows their Bible or doesn't, could Google that and know what the Bible verse says. But this, in five symbols, and I'm not going to take credit for this, is reading Phil Robertson devotional. And he says this is how the gospel was preached to him. This is how he shares the gospel with, that, with others. This is how he shared the gospel with Donald Trump. And you can easily write it on a napkin and give it to people. But this is the gospel in five symbols. He came down. He came down to this earth for us. He died on a cross, taking our sins on him for us because he loved us. He was buried in a tomb, and three days later, he rose again. And then he ascended back to heaven where he's preparing a place. And best of all, he's coming back. <laughs> he's coming back. And you can put this on the back of your car. You can write it down. And if you don't want to write it down, I had bookmarks made. That if any of you want them, you can keep them with you. You can keep them in your Bible. If you want to share the gospel with somebody, you can do exactly what I just did and tell people. He came down. He died for you. He rose again. He's going to prepare a place. And he's coming back for you if you'll accept him. And on the back of it, it's got the church address. It's got the Romans 116. And it's got the QR code to lead them to the YouTube. And you can take as many of these as you want. And I can order more. You can take as many of these as you want and put them on your vehicle, and I can make more. And I have small ones if you want to put one on your side window that doesn't have the Bible verse. That at some point, somebody might ask, what does that mean? And then you're ready to give an answer, and you should be ready as we read in First Peter. The gospel needs to be preached to everyone. All. We have the opportunity. We are called to do it. And it is so much easier for us to preach it than it was for generations. And they did it. And every time you drive by somebody and they see this, you're casting out the seed. You are preaching the gospel. And it may not say, Jesus comes down and give them the gospel. But if they're looking at it and they're confused on what all these little symbols mean, at the very least, I think the people are probably going to look up, what's that Bible verse? And when they look up that Bible verse, even if they only read the first part of it, it says, I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel. And we should be unashamed and preach unashamed. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you once again. Because you came down, taking on the form of a human so that you could conquer death, conquer sin, and take my place. And I thank you for that, Lord. I pray, Lord, you help us to just with boldness share the good news. We shouldn't be ashamed because we are giving the good news to somebody that is better than anything else we could give because we are preaching the good news the gospel of Shalom. I pray, Lord, that as we go through this week, you remind us, you prepare us, and you help us to be open that when somebody asks, we're ready to give an answer. I pray, Lord, that as we go from this place, that you watch over us, you guide us, you bring us back at the time appointed by the Father. And once again, Lord, just help us to be unashamed, to share what is good news with all. We'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for being here today.